All right, everyone, how about a little Mars in Capricorn? I've been waiting to pull on this. This is an important energy during the setup month. I mentioned it, and it came in during yesterday's Cure for Cancer reading, where I look at the soulmate cycle from the angle of the hot spot, if you will, the overview of it. Um, what is Mars in Capricorn? Well, first of all, it doesn't matter what your sign is here at Steve's Love Tarot. This is just straight-up energy reading. If you're here, you're here for a reason. It's a general reading. Okay, may or may not resonate with you. It's all timeless. You're all moving at different speeds on your timeline. Mars and Capricorn can make us very, uh, oh, gung-ho to go after our goals. Okay, it can, yeah. And it does. It, it tends to. Huh? Fine. But there's an underlying energy here of control. We also tend with Mars and Capricorn, we can, and this is one of those you know, one of those trans, uh, transits of it where we can think we can control everything, okay? And only to learn that we don't. We don't control a goddamn thing other than our own energy, our own space, our energetic space, how we react to things, how we process things, all of that. Then we do that with our free will superpower, if you will, okay? Um, we got an, I'm pulling on the incoming energy. I got a pre-shuffle here that shows, strangely enough, just that. In its own way, though. We got someone here who is moving towards you. The Six of Swords. Just the surface energy. The Six of Swords. Okay? Definitely moving towards you, no doubt. But it's crossed by the Seven of Swords. Deception. And there's the Eight of Pentacles. It's some, this, these three cards, before we go any further here, these three cards together which is sort of a, a Seven of Swords sandwich with the bread being the Eight of Pentacles and the Six of Swords, is someone thinking that they're, that they're doing it, that we're getting our goal, we're attaining our goal, but it's, we're spinning our wheels. It's, it's, not, it's not happening. It, the, it's very deceptive, that thought that we're getting things done. That's why this is the third slowest energy in the tarot. Where it's a bit of uh, two steps forward and one step back. Okay, There is a little bit of forward movement here. But somebody's listening to the wrong energy, and that's their ego. It's the devil, but it's the devil energy here, the goat with its feet on fire, <laughs> right? This is a frequency of devil energy that controls, that, that puffs up our ego a bit, okay? Could have just as easily been a king of wands here. But this is showing me how powerful this energy is. So it's like listening to the wrong thing. Yeah, 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 go ahead, go ahead. This goat will tell you all sorts of things. It's only after, and, and it's, it's resulting in, you know, sort of a, the second slowest energy of the tarot. But it, it's a still energy here, this Knight of Pentacles. Okay? It's very still. They could be going faster if they weren't listening to this goat. Underneath it is what you want to listen to, the hermit. The goat doesn't exist here in the soul. This is all ego energy. This frequency of it is all ego energy. If we listen to the soul, that's when we move forward fast. But until then, somebody here is learning a lesson under this transit. All right, you may learn some lessons too. I mean, you got some, still got some growth to do. The DF side isn't perfect. You guys are reflecting as Empress and Queen of Pentacles, so it's pretty close. A good number of you, but some of you are a little further behind. But it's somebody here who learns the lesson of the fact that we don't control the river. Energy readers call the energy around us the river. You don't control it any more than you control an actual river. You're not going to go down to a river near your house and go, I want this to flow that way, right? It's not going to, it doesn't work that way, all right? So let's see where we go here, all right? And we know that the, that the DM side of this primarily, of this soulmate cycle, um, it is all about control. We call them the Burger King around here for a reason. Burger King, because of their slogan, have it your way, is someone who thinks that they get things their way, right? And that's why they ran from you, because it's a real connection that requires reciprocation and all of that. Well, any, any even new soulmates on the DM side of this connection still have the same karmic debt to pay of learning that, you know, it's just being, not being afraid to be vulnerable, you know? And, and what somebody's going to learn here um, is the Five of Pentacles, the card before the cut. Why the fuck are we here? And I, there's a card that fell on the floor, and it's justice. Just, the why the fuck are we here is because of justice and the Five of Pentacles. Somebody here leaving themselves out. Leave it because they think they can control things. They think they're moving forward toward their goals, but they're going toward the wrong goal because they're listening to the wrong thing. 
All right, and this is again. You're going to see all sorts of readings on Mars and Capricorn, and it's pro those readings are probably going to focus more on the aspect of someone going for it, going for the goals. I think you guys will. I think on the other side, they're listening to the wrong thing. They're going for their goals on their terms. You go for your goals flowing with the energy. If you try to go for your goals on your terms and I did, sort of a Frank Sinatra, I did it my way sort of a thing, well, it doesn't always work out the best. It, it doesn't, you're better off going with the flow of energy and somebody isn't here and they're going to learn a lesson. They're going to learn. The energy will balance out around them. What comes after the cut? This is kind of an important card here. Death, transformation, right? Again, somebody's going to learn that they're going to have to change. That they're going to have to put an end to a thought pattern. Uh, too much ego, not enough soul, whatever it is. All right? It's a very important energy here, Mars and Capricorn. It's, it's, it's a key element of this setup that is January. You know, the building of the foundation for the big changes to come this year. We talked about a lot of that in recent readings, including yesterday's Cure for Cancer. So let's, let's pull a reading here. Now that we have the basic concept down of what's going on, okay? Let's see where we go. All right, let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Typically, with a lot of people, when things don't go their way, they get bummed out. And that's what happens with these runners here. We had, we had the sad rose, right? The five of cups looks pretty sad, right? Left out, feeling left out, all that kind of thing. It, it, if you're controlling your energy space, you're controlling your reaction to things. You, you know that you don't control it, so you adapt. And somebody here is going to have to learn the concept of adapting. So, let's get a reading. Give me the soulmate cycle with the influence of Mars and Capricorn universe. Let's go. Give me a reading. All right. Eight swords. Didn't that come up in the Cure for Cancer reading from another deck? Wasn't there an eight swords I remember somewhere up top? All the potential of healing and justice was crossing the Four of Swords, some healing, and there was a sun card or something like that. I, but eight swords was getting in the way. Our overall energy is eight swords. Somebody overthinking things, over trying things, just what's fueling this? Yeah, the hangman. Causing, again, causing them to have to reevaluate. And but when we, if we reevaluate, we need to do that from a calm perspective, controlling our energy space, not from eight swords. You can't help anybody in eight swords. They got to get out of it themselves. So I think what's probably happening here is this connection's planted some seeds, and those seeds are is, is all that you can do. That's it. Uh, you can. They'll learn from example. We'll learn by example of watching others, watching you, whatever it is. But somebody here. This incoming energy, it's eight swords. It's confusing. I have all this determination to do this and it doesn't work. Well, the energy has to be right for something to work. So you flow with the energy. You, you, you make it work within the energy that's available to you is what that means. Somebody here is going to have to get a new perspective on that. And it's tough to get perspective in the eight of swords, I will tell you. Okay, I think there's a catawampus energy here big time. Here, right here is the energy around your connection. Right here is how this person's behaving in the 3D. Right here is their soul. This is the hidden energy message from the universe. Red with the energy of your connection. And right here is the potential final outcome. I say potential because I cannot predict free will. Nobody can. I will clarify everything. Throw some universe cards at the end. And if I think I need to extend it, I will. There will be a link in the description. All right? You can either go to the extended or not. It doesn't matter. I think I need to extend it. I do it for me. And if you want to watch... I recommend it. Mars is powerful energy. It's fiery, no doubt. No doubt. Okay. So that means that this is a fiery eight of swords. So it's a it's a it's a lot. Transformation is blocked. It's happening. It can happen, but it can't happen until these swords go away. All right. So let's see. Energy around your connection here with this transit of Mars through Capricorn. There it is. I said, up in the pre-shuffle, I said that devil could have been a king of wands. Didn't I say that? Rewind. Right? King of wands is the energy of your connection. Didn't bring us a devil again. Brought us a king of wands. It's some, oh, why isn't this working? It's, people who are big in their ego freak out when things don't go their way. I got, my, I got this goal. I'm going to go toward the, the DF. And then I, I chicken. Why isn't this working? Why, why isn't this working? Maybe their goal is to keep things the same on their side. It's a, it's a false goal. Right? It's, they shouldn't be. It's toxic on their side for a lot of them. This guy always gets confused when things don't go their way. Think of Fonzie on Happy Days, right? 
What, what if one time he, he used to hit the jukebox and it would go off, right? It'd start playing a song when he went to Arnold's, the little diner, right? What if one time Fonzie walked in, snapped his fingers or hit the jukebox or whatever he did and it didn't come on? Or he snaps his fingers and two girls don't come running, right? What would happen? This, it, wait, what's going on? He'd, get, he'd have a crisis of faith all of a sudden. He wouldn't be cool anymore, right? Well, that's kind of what's happening here. I got a king of wands. I got some arrogance here. Arrogance has a way of getting slapped down under these current energetic conditions, especially with this particular transit of Mars and Capricorn. How they behaving in the 3D? Emotional immaturity, Knight of Wands, haphazardly doing things. This is exactly what I just described to you. The Knight of Wands, haphazardly doing things. How they behaving in the 3D? Like a Knight of Wands, like Fonzie going in, hitting the jukebox, or snapping his fingers and two girls come running, except this time they don't. What's going on here? It could be somebody actually communicates with you and, they, and your reaction surprises them. They just thought you'd fall at their feet. Your little skirt or your pants would fall right off and that didn't happen. Whoa, whoa. I think that's even something Fonzie used to say. He said, whoa, like that. We'd probably say that, right? Uh, maybe your person's last name is Fonzarelli. I don't know. Right here, soul energy. It book, their soul, it bookends. It's read with this soul connection here in my reading. The hermit, the soul is fine. Their soul is fine. That devil from the pre-shuffle can't get in the soul. People get this wrong all the time. They think, oh, that, that serial killer got a bad soul. The soul is evil. No, it isn't. It's just their heart chakra is shut off. And not, no energy from the soul is getting it. They're just 100% ego. And when you get like that, you go round and round in your head. You start getting delusions of grandeur. You got some that are a mission-oriented. Right, they, they think they're doing it. Well, I'm going to take this person out for a reason. Right, it's going to save humanity. That kind of convinced themselves. It's like a big conspiracy theory. That's where, you know, again, I mean, your person's not that drastic, of course, but yeah, it, this, this is proof of everything I've said so far. Their soul is fine. It's just not getting through. It, it, this, is, this is like the instruction book, right? And this is how they're reacting to it. No, 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 I, 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 haphazard. I, I don't need the instructions. It's fine. No, nope. you sure? The hermit would take his time. He'd read the instructions. He'd make sure all there weren't any parts left over when putting the bicycle, you know, uh, when building the bicycle for the child, right? And so the child doesn't end up in the emergency room. Why are these nine bolts left over? I don't know. Pfft, whatever, right? That's how they're behaving, okay? And it's confusing to them when things don't go their way. I think... I'm drawn to the light here. I think it's. I think we want this. We want Fonzie to hit the jukebox and nothing to happen. Because when that happens, it gets them thinking. Even if they overthink, it's okay. The universe seems to think it still provides some perspective. Okay? All right, let's talk to the universe. Hidden energy. Just us talking to the fickle old gal. All right? It can be read with the King of Wands. I'm not sure here. Huh? Some cards from the pre-shuffle are coming back. Knight of Pentacles. Knight of Pentacles. Why, why, would the, why would the Knight of Pentacles be here? It's a stopped energy. It's a deer in the headlights energy. I'm going to need to clarify that. I don't really know why that's here. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not sure. I'm looking at that. I kind of lean back. And I'm like, what the hell? I don't know. What's the potential final outcome? Red with Knight of Wands. Seven of Pentacles. Um... It's a lesson. The universe basically saying this is a lesson they need to learn. The most confusing energy on the table for me is actually this. I know why in the context of the pre-shuffle it came up. I don't know why it came up here. So we're going to clarify. I'm very curious, but we got to get there. All right. Uh, Seven of Pentacles, is that communication for you? No. I, I don't think so. I think it's someone here. I said, I said it earlier. Rewind. I said I think seeds were planted by your connection. And I think it's going to get, somebody's going to get to thinking. And that's part of the setup. That's part of the building the foundation for the changes that come this year. And it's what January's for. It's, one of, it's a very important January, no doubt. Uh, we'll see when we clarify. All right? Okay. Uh, let's talk about the King of Wands. And by the way, randomly at the bottom of the Witches, which we're going to use for clarification, is the Seven of Pentacles. It's a card I was thinking of in my mind's eye when I was reading this energy. Right? Somebody here just realizing... 
some things. Um, it's a bit of uh, divine timing. It's about the energy being right for somebody to learn this lesson. It's very soul activating for them, provided they can shut this down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is probably why this is here. It's limiting in some way. All right, let's let's go. Let's clarify. Uh, King of Wands, tell me about it. <clears throat> let's go. Tell me about the King of Wands. Why is it here? Mm. Well, let's see. It's a very attractive snake. It's very stripy. I'm sort of noticing that. Maybe somebody figures, well, I'm, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've known a lot of good-looking people that, that have been very lonely in my life. And they wonder, why well, I'm so good-looking. Why, why am I so lonely? You know, and they, they don't realize, in part, it's not just about looks. It's about attitude and the energy you're putting out. Sometimes the best-looking people put out repellent for energy without realizing it. That's kind of what this is here. Somebody is looking real good. They got nice stripes and spots on them. But they're, but they're, but people perceive them as this, right? Like stay away, kind of a thing. Like my snake noise, there you like that. All right, that's a way of describing the energy a little bit of that King of Wands. All right, let's see. Why is the King of Wands here in the energy of the connection? Yeah, it's crossed by the moon. They're scary. Their energy is. There's just it's it's a hidden energy card, but. There's something about this person, whoever this person is. Could be your runner, could be a new soulmate. But for most of you, this is an older energy that's been attached to you. There's something about them that under this transit makes them repellent. It's probably because they're of this. People who are putting out and who are stuck in eight swords tend to be repellent. For me, it's it's sort of the, you know, it's the person that you you, you kind of move away from. At the right, if you're at a bar or a pub and you're trying to pick somebody up, are you going to go for the for the person that's chucking stuff against the wall and look? It looks like they're about to kill somebody. That kind of thing. You're not going to go for that. Somebody right, right here. It's kind of depressing energy on some level. Okay. Why? Because things aren't going their way. They can't control things. What's on top? Three of cups. Um. There's a lot of emotions stored up here. I think somebody might express their emotion to you. You might get some communication here, might. But I think even if it shows up in February um, during this transit, I think it comes out like that. It's a bit of repellent to you. And it's a bit what I said earlier. What if Fonzie snaps his fingers and two girls don't come running? One for each arm, right? So again, somebody shows up, they, they, they look good, they feel good. No, nope, not realizing that they're a bit of like that. Um, and they show up. And they open up the, what they see as opening up their feelings to you, and your reaction sends them into a tizzy. It could be that. It could be something else that happens in their life along that line, right? Okay. All right. Why is the Three of Cups here? Yeah. The devil is exactly what I just said. Everything I just said. Somebody's opening up their emotions, but. It's from a very ego perspective. And I even mentioned the devil in the pre-shuffle and said we could have replaced that devil with the king of wands. I did. Rewind. Well, here's the devil from another deck right on top of the king of wands. Here, someone expressing, but they're expressing, it seems, it comes across as very like that. Fangs and hood up kind of a thing. And I think they're surprised by your reaction. And I think it gives them pause for thought. Okay, I think it makes them pause for thought a little bit, which hence the Seven of Pentacles. All right, so somebody learns something here, no doubt about it. Let's talk about the Knight of Wands, how they're behaving in the 3D. Like an, like an, uh, it, there's arrogance here. There's arrogance. This is a, Mars and Capricorn is an energy that makes you just aggressively go for your goals. And, but this energy, because there's so much ego, there's that arrogance of I can't lose. And you never want to go into that. You always want to go into neutral, things neutral. It's something that I initially learned very young from Bruce Lee when I read his book that he wrote uh, about Jeet Kune Do, which is his martial arts style. He, he talked about in that book, it's sort of, I read it when I was a kid. He talked about it in that book as though going into a confrontation, going into a fight. And he said, if you, if you think you're going to win or you think you're going to lose going into it, you've already lost either way. 
you have to go in completely neat, neutral so that you can be like water. Water takes the shape of whatever you pour it into. You react to what your situation is. And that's what we control. We control our reactions. Somebody here thinks they can't lose, right? And I think they're about to get, uh, you know, Fonzie's about to snap his fingers and the girls are not going to come running. And I think it sends them into this, which causes them to get a new perspective maybe on themselves. Might cause some mild depression for a moment. I don't know. Whatever it is, puts them in a deer in the headlights energy. All right. All right. Why's the Knight of Wands here? Tell me about it. Temperance. It's all happening for a reason. Somebody need, the environmental energy around them is telling them to slow down. Envi this is, there's a lot of soul here. There's a lot of soul here. The soul energy is trying to flow in, but the heart chakra is not open. There's too much arrogance here. We, we listen into the devil in the corner. Okay? Um, trying to get them to slow down. Trying to get them to read the instructions. All right. Uh, all right. What's on top? Five of swords. This is self-sabotage. They're self-sabotaging the whole thing. Whole thing. If they, were, if, they, if they are putting a bike together for a little kid... That kid's going to the emergency room because there's going to be a pile of nuts and bolts left over. All right? It's a self sabotage energy. Somebody thinks they can't lose. That's sabotage. It's what I just told you. Touching story about what Bruce Lee said. Touching story. You go in, you look at an opponent, you think, I can't lose. Or you think, I'm going to lose. Either way, either of those things, you lose. You've lost. You stand a great chance of it. Mm. All right. Neutral. That's why I teach neutrality. Boy, boy, that sent me down a road when I read that. I think, wow, he making sense. I was very young, but I was figuring it out. I was seeing where a lot of people, by the time I was about 10 years old, I figured out where people were going wrong, right? Um, people think, oh, if I get this goal, I'm gonna be, everything's going to be great. I'll be fine. If I can do this, I'll be fine. Or if I get this, I'll be fine. There's a lot of times they do it with money, right? Well, if I get this much money, I'll be fine. And you learn the hard way, and this is what I'm talking about here. Somebody learning the hard way. Somebody getting in eight swords here. Uh, you learn the hard way that life is a bit like a jigsaw puzzle, right? Except it's a puzzle you get from a discount store that's missing a piece. So you never really, it's never really 100%. There is no 100%. It's not going to make you okay. It com everything comes with its own set of complications, its own set of differences. If we get too enthusiastic about, well, I'm going to be fine if I get this. Not necessarily. Somebody here is sort of living in that sort of perspective, and I think they get smacked down here at some point. Why is Five of Swords here? Yes, yeah, Seven of Wands. Um, somebody here just thinks they got it. Like, it's, I talk about this guy speaking of martial arts. I talk about this guy all the time who's seen too many Chuck Norris movies, right? Thinks one guy can take on six other guys, right? Because it happened, he does it in the movie. Right, I got all the black belts Chuck Norris has, he's thinking. Right, I can do this. Except in the movies, they come at you one at a time. Right, they, they don't, all six are coming, coming at you at once here. Right, unless you're some kind of, unless you've got a, a couple of knives and you become a human blender, you, you're in some trouble. And I don't think that wand's going to be enough for this particular character. Because these six wands, in this analogy, are trained just as much as that person. It's not like they're six laymen. Okay, but maybe you got a chance at that. But six masters coming at you? Good luck. Right? Good luck. My point is somebody thinks they got this. This backs up my arrogance. Oh, I got this. It's no problem. All right? They're breaking the golden rule of energy. <laughs> never assume you never assume anything. All right? Never assume you're right 100%. Never assume 100% because it's not possible. Why is the hermit here? Nothing's ever 100%. The late great Jonathan Kainer used to say all the time, uh, the astrologer, he used to say all the time uh, something about in, in his recollection 92% is about the best we ever do or something along those lines, some percentage along those lines. I, th I, I tend to agree with that. I think it might be slightly higher than that but I, I tend to agree with it. Right, so what's going on with the hermit here? But somebody here, it, the problem is when you approach things with ego, the ego gets damaged very easily. The soul is, is like punching the Hulk. You know, they like look at you and laugh. You know, it, the, the ego get damaged very easily. The ego, it's, the more people puff it up, the, the funnier it is to me because the ego is a scrawny little weakling. You know, it really is. All right, why is the hermit here? Tell me about the hermit because their soul is fine. It's 100%. It's fine. 
No doubt. I think they learned something here. I think part of what happens here is why it's a setup is it activates this. Yep, yep, I'm right. Here he is. He's been coming up in readings quite a bit lately. It's crossed by the Knight of Swords. Mm-hmm. I think, what did I just say? Rewind. I said, I, I said, I think all of this happens and it wakes the soul up. It does. It teaches them something. They're about to learn a lesson here. This is, a, the Knight of Swords brings a message of change. Typically, that, that message is very powerful. It changes things. And I think that's what happens here. I think somebody realizes they need to stop listening to the devil, to the goat, if you will, from the pre-shuffle. What's on top? Because of what happens. It gives them, they get in their head, but it also affords the opportunity of some perspective with the hangman fueling our overall energy of the Eight of Swords. What's on top? <laughs> I just got done talking about it. It's the hangman. Uh, that, that right there is the universe saying Steve's 100% right. Rewind and listen to what he just said. <laughs> Straight up. There's the hangman. There's the hangman. I was talking about it and I pulled it. Mm. I was talking about the Eight of Swords a lot in the Cure for Cancer yesterday. And I said Mars and Capricorn was there from another deck. We had the Eight of Swords on the table. Here's the Eight of Swords, your overall energy of this reading. I mean, it is what it is. You know, the universe and I are old friends, the fickle old gal. She gets on my nerves sometimes, but uh, I just flow with the energy. That's all. Mm. I life pretty stress-free. I'm a pretty stress-free guy because of that. You know, things don't always go my way, but I adapt to them quickly enough that it looks like they do. That's why people around me think it's Steve's luck. No, it's not Steve's luck. I'm just flowing with the energy. This person here, about to learn a lesson. Get some perspective on who they need to listen to. You listen to the tortoise, not this asshole. All right, not this devil asshole. What's, why is the hangman here? The tower. Yeah, they're about to learn a lesson. This is going to teach them something. All right? Yeah, 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 I got this. I got this. I got this. They're going to learn a lesson that they could have just learned had they read Bruce Lee's book. Okay. I think, uh, end of story. All right. What's going on here? Knight of Pentacles. I've been waiting to pull on it. Mm hmm. It's good. You want this to play out. You want this to play out. And I think for some of you, this is communication from this person. And I don't think your reaction is what they expect. And that's okay. It's okay. Smack the cobra down. All right? There you go. Somebody's, it's, it's funny when I read this energy. I mean, it's great that the devil showed up. It backs up what I said. But it's somebody opening up and they think because they look good that it's fine that they can just, you know, open up and people will fall at their feet. It's not true. It's coming out very spitting cobra kind of venom here. All right? It's coming out as repellent. Is what it is. Why is the Knight of Pentacles here? Tell me more about this because it's the most confusing energy on the table. I get it, deer in the headlights. I get it. When it doesn't work, when they open up and it doesn't work, it's like, huh? What? Huh? Like that. I get it. That's one of the energies. I want some of the other energies here that are confusing me. All right? And yeah, I get confused. I do. I'm pretty good at cold reading energy without the cards, but sometimes I get an energy in real life and I'll go home and I'll pull a couple cards on it. You know, even to this day I'll do that. Most of the time I'm okay at reading people cold. I don't carry around a deck of cards with me. <laughs> I'm all right. Why well, is the Knight of Pentacles here? But this one here, I, if this were a person, I'd probably go home and grab a deck of cards. Okay, it ties to this energy over here in the 3D because we had temperance crossing here and we got temperance crossing here. I get it. I get it. Okay. Um, when we believe that, you know, you, it's a deer in the headlights because when we believe that we've got this and then it doesn't happen or we don't got it, we find out real quick that we don't control the energies around us. Uh, it actually brings a great deal of healing. It, it's the truth that, that they need to activate over here, to activate the soul, if you will, to get that Knight of Swords. It's that message from the Knight of Swords, in a way, because this energy flows from here to here. So it all sort of, this ties with this and this by default. What's on top? The Empress. Mm. Yeah, somebody is coming to open up to you. Okay, absolutely. Somebody is opening up to you or wants to, you're, you're definitely their goal on some level, right? That goal that they're pursuing. Oh, I got this. Oh, yeah, look at me with the stripes. Yeah, Fonzie, right? Snap the finger. There's the Empress. That don't work on the Empress. That works on girls with low self-worth, Fonzie. That's who that works on. Might work on Pinky Tuscadero, 
all the Hooper triplets, right? Which were characters on the show, I think. But it don't work. This ain't Pinky Tuscadero and this ain't the Hooper triplets, okay? This is the Empress. And I think what's happening here is somebody severely underestimating the emotion required to bang the Empress. Can I phrase it like that? I'm going to anyway. All right? It's obviously much deeper than that, but you catch my drift. Why is the Empress here? The Two of Pentacles. Um, this is funny. This is red with the devil. It's a frustration energy. You can see the heat, right? Heat. It's someone who's been holding on to this energy, thinking about this for a long time, and now they have the gumption to go get it, right? But they're premature. They jump in the gun. All right, the devil will off this type. This frequency of devil energy will often encourage you to do things that you're not ready to do. Mm. Okay, mm. I see this energy a lot with teenage boys that talk girls out of the, teenage girls out of their pants. This is that frequency of energy a little bit, except in this case it's reversed onto your person. Right? That's why it just it's just what I said around the empress. It really is. It is that, and I think they're a deer in the headlights for it. I think they're surprised. Usually, I snap my fingers and two girls come, and I got one on each arm. What's going on? Why can't I snap my fingers? This one here keeps eating. She stays at her booth over at Arnold's diner. Right? It's just the way it is. It's just, they're underestimating here, and we do that when we say, "Oh, I got this," arrogantly. Oh, it's no problem. Piece of cake. I can get that green dress off. No problem. Piece of cake, I'll just get them back. I ran from them, made them cry, made them watch tarot readings. I get them back. It's fine. I, I got this. When we get that arrogant, right, it, it comes across in the way we communicate these emotions. And it's not enough. It's, you've grown. You're, you're reflecting in my reading here as Empress Energy. You're a much higher vibration than a Knight of Wands. I could tell you that, or even a King of Wands. Let's talk about Seven Pentacles. So again, I've got somebody here who's got some thinking to do. Seeds are planted because of what happens here. And because of that, we get a tower in the soul and a whole new perspective on what and who they should be listening to and how they should be behaving. And this is in part why this is a big part of the setup, air quotes, setup energy that is January. And it came up in my Q1 reading for 2024 and I wrote about it in my write-up. On, at sltblog.com when I wrote about January 2024. Go read it. Make sure you've read it. You know. All right, here we go. It's a big year. It's a year I, I called 32. That's enlightenment, expansion, growth. It's a powerful number. I, I did not name it 32 lightly. Okay, did not. I got a lot of signs leading up to that August. Late August is usually when I name the coming year. Typically, early September, late August. I got a lot of signs leading up to that and it's it's already proving true we're only three days three four days in on the year all right let's go i'm still shuffling seven of pentacles what's the potential final outcome here what can my empress expect huh what the final well probably nothing but as far as what my empress could expect but either way what the, why this is all happening it's because of massive transformation. Uh, it's alchemy energy. It's the magician. It's led into gold. Okay? It's, it's causing someone to stop. Pause. Give some thought. Right? Too much thought initially. Initially their ego is hurt. So they get in eight swords. But this magician card tells me it does eventually lead to hangman. Which is verified by the fact that the hangman is in the soul. And crossed over here by a knight of swords. So they get it. You know? They get it. There's transformation that happens because of everything we talked about. What's on top? Ten swords. Um, somebody thinks they fucked this. It's, it's going to play out a couple ways. Either they approach you and it doesn't come out right and you kick them to the curb. I'm not that easy. You can't just snap your fingers. I'm the fucking empress. And they feel like they and they realize that they fucked it up. And they realize that. And that causes them to go back and think. Or it's the feeling of feeling of failure that causes them to get their shit together in some way. Okay? That's the easiest way I could phrase it. Why is Ten of Swords here? It's good that it's a Ten. Tens are the end and dead end that lead to a new beginning. Why is the Ten of Swords here? An Ace. This should have led to an Ace. I was just going to say that. I didn't know what's here. I should have said it because I'd look really cool if I did, right? Uh, but here's your Ace. It, the, the suits don't have to match. 
tens of the end and dead end that lead to a new beginning. So we're putting ten swords and they fuck this up. They feel like, oh no, I snapped my fingers. The Empress didn't show up. I went and talked to the Empress. I thought I was opening my soul. It turns out I was just spitting venom, right? Uh, and you know how that might go. Somebody on their perspective feels like they're opening up to you, but really they're kind of insulting you a little bit and shifting blame back on you for them running, that kind of thing. Well, that's not going to go right. Somebody either way knows that they shot themselves in the foot here. And that leads eventually, eventually, as they think, as they get perspective, as the Knight of Swords comes in, they get perspective and the tower falls, that leads to a new beginning in love eventually. I don't think right off the cuff. I think this transit of Mars and Capricorn is essential. It's something that the DM side of this soulmate cycle has to go through. He has to learn this way. When's Fonzie ever going to grow up? Huh? Fonzie, you think like years and years later, he's, if, if he doesn't grow up at 50, 60 years old, he's still living above the Cunningham's garage and snapping his fingers and older chicks are coming. I mean, you know, it, it, Fonzie only grows up when the snapping the finger stops working. And, you know, it starts to get a little sad that he's living above the garage of uh, Richie's parents. You know, that kind of thing. Apply it however you want. It's a great analogy for what's happening here. Somebody here grows up when they realize that the snapping is not working on the fucking Empress. And that's it. Somebody thinks they got it, and that's their mistake under this energy. This is, a, this is something that's going to teach them, give them some great perspective, blow their fucking soul and mind straight out that we don't control anything. You don't control the energy around you that's coming in any more than I control the energy that comes in for a reading. I could pull, I could say, hey, I want to pull on Mercury or, or Mars in Capricorn or whatever. But the universe might send me something else. Look at my Mercury and Sagittarius reading. I asked the universe to tell me about the incoming energy, right? I thought I was just going to pull a reading on, on the runner. And it started out a little bit that way, and then it flipped. And we learned why in the extended, because it's an important part. It's part of where their lesson comes from. And a lot of that energy is here. A lot of that knocking the ego down a peg. You don't, you don't got this kind of a thing. And uh, it does lead to new love. It does lead to them coming at you under a new energy eventually for most of you. Or going after love in a different way on their side, one or the other. All right. Let's see what else the universe wants to tell you. I'm going to extend this. I am. I got a devil on the table here. Well, I want to figure out what the fuck's going on. That's it. That's my whole extended. I'm going to pull on you because, I, because you showed up as the empress here. They show up as the devil over and over again or king of wands or knight of wands. But either way. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to pull on you. I'll open the extended by pulling on you so I get some contrast. But the rest of the reading is just I'm going to figure out what the fuck's going on with this person. Why would anyone think they got this? You know, Why would you go in with those kinds of expectations? You only set yourself up for a huge disappointment and a huge blow to the ego. The ego is fragile. It's fragile. The soul is indestructible. I would rather go in as Superman you know, than some fragile ego. What's going on here? Let's see where we go. What else you want to tell everybody before I go pull some wicked voodoo here? Huh? Let's go. Queen, you guys are also reflecting as Queen of Pentacles. There's Knight of Swords. That ties to the Knight of Swords and the soul that was over here. Here's two swords and there's your Emperor. The Emperor will get this. There's something that happens here that, that sends the Emperor into a tizzy. It has to do with you. On a big level. I know that because you're here. But lots of times people with big egos, King of Wands in particular, think they don't need anybody. Right? This energy is put at a bit of a, well, here's a deer in the headlights or a crossroads or a stalemate because they realize that there's something about your energy that they need uh, because of all of this. And what happens is, again, somebody here thinks they can have it their way and they realize that they can't. Uh, and I want to see, I'm going to pull one more, a couple more cards out on that. Yep. There's the, there's the, why the fuck are we here? The five of pentacles right there. And there's your justice again. That comes back. It comes, the whole reading comes full circle with those two cards that were in the, before the cut position. The why the fuck are we here? Yep. Somebody realizes that they can't have it their way because they need you 
more than you need them. You're the higher vibration. This, you're, they're this fawn, and there, there's you. It's a good, it's a good way to look at it. It's a good visual, all right. Uh, but there is something that happens here that creates a great change. Uh, whether the communication you have with them goes bad, or it's just something else that happens in their life that causes this tower to fall in the soul. Whatever it is, either way, it benefits you at the end. Okay, as far as this connection is concerned. And it probably changes them for the better or at least balances their energy out too, which also benefits you. Just in some good karma coming your way because you help the universe balance some energy, which is all energy is trying to do in nature is balance. Human beings, biggest pain in the ass to the universe, knock it out of balance all the time with our bad free will decisions and overly emotional this and that, you know, and eight, eight swords, definitely out of balance. So that's your reading. I hope it was helpful. If you want the extended, we'll find out what's going on with you. Let's we'll see how you behave in this energy. We see how they are. Let's see how you are and what it does for you specifically. And then we'll find out what the fuck's going on. We'll pull on the devil like crazy. All right? That's your reading. I hope it was helpful. If you like this reading, please like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate all the subscribers, everybody who shares, and everybody who watches. If you want the extended, the link's in the description. Good luck. <laughs>